How's it going? And today I'm doing a basic video on doing a relatively simple color grade in Vegas Pro. And this particular doesn't require any any plugins or LUTs or anything like that. This is just using what you have within Vegas Pro to create a stylized image. Something really simple. So I'm just going to be offering my advice as we kind of go along. And hopefully you'll find it helpful. Okay, my first suggestion tip is whenever you're filming, always try to make sure you get a proper exposure and a custom white balance while you're filming. There's a couple reasons for that. The first reason is it's just less to do in post. You know, if you get your footage properly exposed and you get a custom white balance, chances are your skin tones are gonna be just fine if you got a custom white balance. And so there's no need to do that in post. So it saves time ultimately, but more important, it also keeps the quality of the footage there because the, every time you have to do a correction, it has the potential to break down the footage. It's just that much more processing of your image that doesn't need to be done. So if you don't need to do um, an exposure and you don't need to do a white balance, that's just more room for the other effects that you want to add. So it'll help preserve the quality of your image, the less effects you have to add on it in post. In this image, I have a good white balance. You can tell just by looking at the RGB parade when the red, green, and blue channels line up, you basically got a white balanced image. It is underexposed. Now I will be fixing that, but I would be fixing that anyway. So how I would fix an underexposed image is I would go into FX and I would go to the color curves here and I would go OK. When I'm adjusting for exposure, the scope I'd be looking at is the waveform monitor because this shows me my highs is 100 is white and zero is black. And the rule of thumb here is, so what I would do to bring this up is I would grab this handle here and just start pulling up. And the more I pull longwise, the wider uh, range it covers and then the higher up I go. And see, you can see the difference in the images from the old to the new but I'm gonna go ahead and click that off. The rule here also is that you don't wanna bring your whites up too high. You know, maybe around no higher than 90. That's part of the cinematic look. Whites that look clipped or blown out don't usually look cinematic. So keep your whites down. Don't take them all the way to the top. Keep them like right around 90. So I'd say uh, right about there. The other thing is, don't forget your eyes are the best video scope that you've got. At the end of the day, you've got to please yourself, so make sure you like what you're seeing. And who cares what the scope says, just you've got to look at the MSA if you like. That's really the most important. So now I brought the, the exposure up. It looks better now, a lot better. If you click this, you can turn it off and on to see the difference, right? Now, even in just doing that, I might have added noise or degraded the image by bringing it up that high. I should have gotten a proper exposure when I was shooting this. And then for the low end, the shadow side here, we're just gonna click and pull down. And the rule here is you don't wanna bring it all the way down to zero. You actually, what you wanna be looking at is the monitor and you wanna make sure that you bring it down, but not so much that you lose detail in the dark areas, in the shadows here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this down. You know, again, this is one of those things you've gotta to do to kind of a judgment call to see. So I see I'm almost at zero. And I think that's dark without losing too much detail right there. So I'm happy with that. And this is a uh, vastly improved over just adding the color curves. The other thing to note is that when you're filming and when you're doing color correction, whatever is the most important object in the scene should be the brightest object. So that's usually your actor or your subject. So you always want your subject to be the brightest object in the scene. So, and that's the case here. Her face is the brightest. So that's what we want. So our attention is drawn to our face. We don't want our attention drawn over here or here or back here. We want it drawn here to her face. So always keep that in your mind when you're adjusting things to keep the subject as bright as possible. Now that we've done that, that's a giant improvement right here. And I could actually just use this image as is, but I'm going to go farther. The thing that I'm going to do here is I'd like to make the background blue and then bring up the saturation of her skin tones. Now you hear a lot about the orange teal look and what I wanna say about that is that nobody's orange. Nobody should look orange. If you look orange, it's not gonna look uh, right. It looks unhealthy. You look like you have hepatitis or something. <laughs> so nobody's orange really when they're saying orange teal. Orange is really, you could say, flesh tone, saturated flesh tone 
versus teal. But that, I guess, doesn't sound as easy as orange teal. Because I think orange teal doesn't look right. It doesn't look natural. And you don't want to uh, heavy hand it in your grading. You don't want to grade it so much that people are like distracted by it and noticing it. So I should mention if you wanted to, let's say this image was out of white balance. What I would do is I would do the exposure first. And now if, let's say this image wasn't white balanced. What I would do is I go into my effects here and I would get the white balance plugin. Just double click it and it pops up here. This is a great tool. If there's something that's white already in the scene, you would just drag this dropper over there and click on it and see where that got you. But notice that uh, there is, I don't really have anything that's white, so I can't use that method. Now, also you should be aware of the default values uh, when you come in here. So the temperature is 5999 and the tint is 10. So those are our default uh, values and then zero and one because you might need to take them back to their default level. So to adjust the white balance, all you gotta do is just adjust the temperature and you see it moves, it changes like that, makes it really blue and this really warms it up. And it's just a subtle adjustment that you usually have to make. And you can just adjust this to where you felt it's appropriate. Like that alone kind of cools off the whole scene and that alone may give you the look that you want, but the whole scene is cooled down, including her face and you really want her face to be pop out a little bit more. You don't want it to have the same cast. The other thing to note is when you're trying to get a fine level adjustment on this, you can literally just type the values in and then that gives you really precise control over the values. The tint would be more for like if you were shooting under fluorescent lights and let's say there was a green cast, you would use this to pull it into magenta and the magenta would cancel out the green cast from the fluorescent lights. So that's uh, that's one thing there. That's what you could do to white balance if it wasn't white balanced. And uh, you can also press control and drag. That gives you a little more fine control. But usually what I'll do is I'll just type in numbers because that's very precise. But since I think she's white balanced already, oh, and what the scope you'd be looking at is you'd be looking at the RGB parade to see. But you can see already that this is pretty well lined up. Uh, there might be, uh, well it's a little off now because, uh, but you'll see when you're dragging these around how they see how they're shifting, everything's shifting. But we're going to go ahead and kill this plugin because she is white balanced. So you make sure you clicked on this plugin chain and you click on that and uh, we're back to where we were. So that's just if you wanted to do uh, white balance. Now the, the next thing is, like I said, we wanted to add some blue to the background and saturate her skin tones to give us a more contrasty look to make her face pop even more than it is. So the first step in that is, there's just two steps really, three steps more to go all together. I say that to remind myself of something. But what we'll do is we'll click FX here and what we can do is we can just go ahead and add everything that we're gonna need right now. So we're gonna add the color corrector, double click. We're going to add the secondary color corrector. And then so I don't forget, I'm going to double click broadcast colors. Okay, and then we go okay. Now here's all these plugins up here. What I want to do is just turn these off because I don't need all of them. I'll turn them on as I need them. So the first thing we're going to do is the color corrector. And this color corrector is a lot of people, I don't know, are intimidated by this. I think it's once you play around with it for a while, it's not too bad. But basically this is used to accentuate certain colors in different levels of the scene. So the scene is broken into shadows, the darks, the midtones, and the highlights. And you can adjust, separate, uh, make adjustments in all those levels. So what I want to do here and is that I want to just add a slight blue to the darker side of this image. I don't want to add blue to the midtones and I don't want to add blues to the highlights because I think that would unnecessarily make her blue. I just want to add it to the darker areas and that will probably might even include her hair, but I want to add some blue back here, just subtle. So to do that, on this tool, we're going to do it in the lows. So on this tool, one way to move this is you can click and drag this, but what's easier is just to click and it'll go right where you want it to go. Click around and you know, whatever look you want, you could any look, any color you wanted, but we don't, we don't want to get crazy. So we want to be actually subtle in our effects. So again, trusting your eyes, you're just going to, you can hit control two to drag this a little more with a little more precision and just drag it until you feel like it's this bl the blue that you're looking for in the shadows there. One thing that you can do while you're doing this is if you click on pan and crop, you want to make sure that 
sync cursor is clicked. And then what you can do is you can actually zoom in on her eye right here. That just gives us a nice reference point to see when we were put, bringing in too much blue. Uh, so we go back to the color corrector here and let's see what happens as we pull the blue. See her eyes getting bluer. So maybe we don't want to, you know, that's too much. So we, so we just drag it until our eyes are just starting to turn blue, like right about there. Okay, so now we know there's some blue cast in the scene. We really bumped up the blue actually quite a bit. Well, it's like 0.35. So if you wanted to fine tune this blue color, this is the direction on the, this is a 360 degree circle. So 323 is the, the this color of blue that we're on right now. But you can fine tune your intensity by just typing in numbers. So I type in 0.3 and that's a little less. If I type in point, I don't know, type in 0.4 see it's getting it's increasing the intensity as this pulls out from the center that's increasing your saturation and as, uh, as this goes more to the center it's desaturating it and then around the the will is your phase or your hue or the actual color it can be called those three things color phase or hue and so we see we're at 324 and that's a lose but i want to back that off again i want it to be subtle so i'm going to say I'm just going to say 0.3, I think was good. And I think that's good. And I notice a little bit of blue there. Okay, so now once I've got that referenced out, and I know I've got my blue cast in the lows, what I can do is click back on pan and crop and right click on this, and I can go restore, and I got my image back. Now there's this blue cast going on in the shadows, even in her hair. And that's what I want. But what I don't want, I don't want the blue cast on her skin because I want that part to pop out. So what we're going to do for that is the color, it's a color corrector secondary. And what this allows us to do is isolate out a color and then apply effect just to that color range. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify this color range here on her face and then try to build a mask and then apply saturation only to her skin. So we're going to try to boost up her skin tones is what we're going to try to do here. And uh, sometimes this takes a little work. Now when you go into video effects here, you've got two tabs. you got parameters and you got custom. I like the custom look. I don't, this is supposed to be the modern look, but I actually like this interface for some reason. It looks better. What we're trying to do is again mask out this color here. So what you can do is you click on select effect range right here, and we'll just try to get a color range like right uh, there. Okay. For some reason it blacked out. I don't know why I did that. What I've noticed is that it, you can drag and drop, but you can also click and drag, and sometimes that gives you a little bit better range. Then once we've done that, we can go show mask. There's the mask of her face. Now, one thing I've learned in doing this is that we don't really want the mask to be splotchy. So we got to play around with all these settings here. There's nine of them and just drag until we get a mask that we like. So I'll start with, uh, let me start with limit luminance and I'm going to pull that up. She looks like, uh, on that, uh, exorcist or something. <laughs> and then smooth, smooth is going to bring in more, but I think it's almost better to bring in more than less. And then we'll try this one and see what that does. That one really just hits her. This one really just hits her, her lips. I notice, which maybe we don't want. And smooth doesn't help there. And then let's see, this one kind of moves the effect around a little bit. And then the width, this really helps a lot. So we want to get the mask. So here, what's going to happen is this color that we choose is going to kind of blend into the blue background a little bit. But we definitely want it this. This looks like it might could be a good mask. So we're just going to smooth things out. We don't want anything blotchy. So I think we're going to, we're going to smooth it up quite a bit. Actually, some of these pictures look pretty cool. So we want her face to be not blotchy. As as little blotchy as possible because you might have to there might be some artifacting that starts happening so we're going to have some of this color here now this is the last part of this so as i mentioned 
what we're trying to do is we're trying to get her her skin tone correct. Now there's a on the vector scope here, this vector scope, there's what's called the skin tone line. And on Vegas, for some reason, I don't know why this is on the vector scope, there is no flesh tone line. But where it is is at 122 degrees. And I know that because I overlaid 122 degrees on uh, vector scopes and that's where it would be is 122. It can go like if it goes one or two degrees either way it's probably not going to be the end of the world so don't get you don't have to be like oh right on the money with it but that's where the the flesh tone line is at 122 degrees. But unfortunately we don't have a line so you've got a it's kind of a mobile line here. What we're going to do now is we're going to knowing that that's our angle that we want is 122 we can just pop it in right here. We don't even have to move this. We just go 122 and we know, uh, why didn't it stay? One, two, two. Okay, so now we know we're on the flesh tone line here and the magnitude is our intensity. So if we just type in a number like 0.1, we can start, see it came off for some reason. Why did it do that? There we go. So what that's doing is it's increasing, the more we raise this number, you could click and drag this, but it's not necessarily going to be, see how I'm all over the map with that? I think it's easier just to enter the numbers. So we're just going to go one, two, two. And then this is our intensity. So one would be all the way up. So let me turn off the mask here. And you can just play around with these values. And this will be your most precise way of controlling it. So let's just, for crazy, I'll put 0.5 in there and see what it, see how that really brought her up. And it's actually not a bad look, but it may break down in post with too much artifacting because this is only eight foot uh, footage. And I, and I think that's a little heavy handed, a little much, and her lips are looking kind of weird. So I'm going to say that you want to be more subtle about it. And so I'm going to say something like 0.25. And I think that's, Maybe that's, maybe that's not, uh, maybe point two, three, something like that. Anyway, I think that looks a lot better than what we had. That's it. So we started with, I think I can go back here. We start, <laughs> it, doesn't even, it doesn't have her whole face in here, but we started with this and we ended up with this. So, but it's a dramatic change. And if you go here, you can click on your effects and see the difference they make. So you see how that brings in her skin tones there? So I turn that off. And then you can see here how that the effect of the background. And here the color curves of course was the most dramatic. So we started we added the color curves that fixed our exposure and brought our um, we didn't overdo our whites and we brought our blacks down but not so much to lose detail in the shadow. We did our color corrector here which is to bring a little bit blue into the background. We don't want to bring in the blue into the mids. It's going to be too much to try to counter and it's going to really blue up here. And then we brought in the secondary color character to isolate her skin tones and boost the saturation of that to contrast more with the subtle blue cast in the background. And the very last thing that we would do is go to broadcast colors here. And this is to legalize it for broadcast transmission. If your studio RGB would be if you're going to be broadcasting on YouTube or something like that. So you just come here. There's already a drop down for this. And you can just go lenient setup will do it for you. And that will make sure that your colors don't exceed the broadcast limits. And then also for audio, if you're broadcasting on YouTube, you don't want your audio peaking. You don't want it peaking like about 0.6. Uh, I mean, negative six. And that's, uh, that's it. And then you're good to go. And certainly this is better than what we had to start with. So I'm going to render this out and I'll leave you with that to look at. I want to thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this helpful. Take care and have a great day.